Buckle up, because in this video, we'll make this race car in Scratch, which will lead to our first racing game. We'll also learn about the key press block and the if-then block. Are you ready? Scratchers, start your engines! First, head over to scratch.mit.edu and then click the Create button. Now that we are in our project, let's start making this game. Since this is a racing game, we do not want to get our cat ran over. So let's go ahead and get rid of him by clicking on the Delete button. Now, let's design a race car. Head over here and hover over the Sprite icon. Then, click the Paint icon. This will allow us to paint anything we want. Now, before we do that, let's name both our costume and our Sprite. So head over here and type in car. And over here, let's also type in car as well. Now, on to drawing. And I am not good at drawing. Oh boy. Thankfully, this can be as simple as a big rectangle and then four small rectangles for wheels. Go ahead and select on the rectangle tool over here. Then, let's change the color to something other than this purple, unless you want the purple. Then, drag across here, and we now have the main part of the car. We can also remove the outline by changing this to zero. Now, onto the wheels. Let's go ahead and select this and change it to black. Then, we can create another rectangle like this. If you want the wheels to be as perfect as possible, here's two tricks for you. Number one, using the pointer tool, you can copy and paste. Then, the wheels remain the same size. And number two, we can zoom in with this one, and then we can use the arrow keys to move the wheel in fine movements. Then, when you're done, just select the equal sign, and it will make the car regular size again. With the wheels made, I will just send each of them to the back using the back tool so that it's behind the car. And congratulations, we've made the simplest car ever. Of course, yours will be so much better than mine. So comment down below what you added to your car. Now, let's get coding. Head over to the code section and we'll do this one block at a time. Since we want to start the game when we press the green flag, let's go ahead and in events, Drag out the when green flag clicked block. Anything attached to this block will run when the green flag is clicked. So let's move our car. Go ahead and go to motion. Then we have the move 10 steps block. This will move our sprite 10 steps in whatever direction is pointing, this case to the right. So when we drag out move 10 steps, we can attach it on here. Now when the green flag is clicked, it will move 10 steps. So let's click on the green flag and our car moves 10 steps. Now it's important to make sure that your car is pointing to the right. Otherwise, it will go in the wrong direction, which might result in an accident. <laughs> However, we don't want our car to move just once. We want our car to move over and over and over and over again. So in control, drag out a forever block. Anything inside of this block will run over and over and over and over and over again until the project is stopped with the red stop sign. So all we have to do is drag out the move 10 steps block into the forever loop, which we do like this. Um, okay, so whenever we move one block, any blocks below it move as well. So all we have to do is disattach the forever block. Then we can drag in the move 10 steps block and then reattach it. Now, Let's drag our car to the left like this. This can only be done while we're editing the project, and not in a mode such as this one. Now, when we press the green flag, our car continues to move to the right. We are now going places! However, in real life, it would be very scary if cars started moving automatically. Like, very scary. Therefore, we only want to move the car if we're touching the up arrow. So, let's add this. First off, we need to find the block that will do the job. So, motion, look, sound, events, control. How about sensing? Here, we have a key space press block here. Does it have an up option? Yes, it does. But this doesn't look like a normal type of block. So I think we have to add some other block to go along with it. The block we want is the if block in control. See, right here. And it even has the hexagonal shape that matches. So, what does this block do? Well, the if block works like this. If something is true, like if the key up arrow is pressed, 
then it runs any code in here. So this code will only run when we're pressing the up arrow. If we're not pressing the up arrow at all, none of the blocks here run. So all we have to do is drag in the key up arrow press block, then the move 10 steps block, and then drag it back in. Now, the moment of truth. When we press the green flag and press the up arrow, the car moves. Now, we also want our car to go in reverse or move backwards. This functionality will be done using the down arrow. Since the code is very similar to what we just made, let's right click and select duplicate. Instead of the up arrow, we want the down arrow. But we want to move backwards 10 steps. Is there a block for that? Doesn't look like there is. Instead, we're going to have to rely on a negative number, specifically negative 10, which is minus sign and then 10. The way this works is while positive numbers will drive you forward, negative numbers will go backward, kind of like the number line. If you think about it, if we go to the right of the number line, the numbers are positive. But if we go to the left of the number line, then the numbers are negative. Now, let's test our code and see if it works. Green flag again. Moving forward works fine. Can we move backward? And we can. Congratulations. Now, there is very little room for our car to move. So let's change the size of the car. This can be done in the look section with the set size block. Let's drag it to the top of the script. Now, let's set the size. Since this is percentage, we want to shrink the number to maybe like 20. If we press the green flag again, now the car is a lot smaller. Now we have a different issue. If you press the up arrow again, wow, our car is going really fast. So maybe we should slow it down. In this part, let's change this to five. And this part, well, come to think of it, you see cars generally going slower when they're going backwards. So let's change this to negative four. If we try the script again, the car is a lot slower now. Finally, let's code our car to churn. Since the script is just similar to the two we just made, let's right click on the down arrow section and duplicate. Then instead of the down arrow, let's change this to the right arrow. Then instead of moving a number of steps, we want to churn. In motion, we have the churn right 15 degrees block. So let's replace the move negative four steps like this. So all we have to do is test our code again and we can do donuts! Great! So we do not want to do donuts, so let's change this number to smaller number, such as five. Now that's a lot better. Finally, we're almost done. We just have to code the left arrow now. Let's right click and duplicate. Then let's select the left arrow. Now there are two ways to make our car turn left. There is a turn left 15 degrees, but you also may have the idea of setting this to negative five. Either one will work, but I'll go with the turn left block. Now, it's time for the final moment. Have we made a drivable car? Let's press the green flag and find out. Yes, we have made a drivable car. Congratulations. And you have made a car that can go anywhere and you don't even need a driver's license. Well, you need a driver's license to drive an actual car. Well, congratulations on learning about the key press block and then the if then block while making a drivable car on Scratch. In the next video, we'll add a track for a car to drive along, but I don't wanna tell you everything because that'd be giving away too many spoilers. Watch out for that video. Be there or be MC squared. See ya.